Hello and welcome to the channel. Now today we're going to mix it up slightly. We're going to ask two of our normal home cooks to take one of my guilty pleasures and make it gourmet. Not that guilty pleasure. We vetoed that one. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> So, yep, yeah, if you get home late and you haven't got time to even throw together a quick supper, the cheese and cracker option is perfect. Simple, humble, delicious, hits the spot every time. Now, I think our version of cheese and crackers is already different to his version of cheese and crackers. So, yeah. he's You've already. You've got a few different cheeses. You've got to have some grapes, some celery, a little bit of chutney, maybe. On your own? Yeah. So, what we have to do is now surpass that. But also, stick to the brief, which is what he's rubbish at. So, cheese and crackers. Why don't we look at the individual elements of a cheese board? If you went to, like, a three Michelin star restaurant, what would that be? What's the poshest cracker that you can get? So you could do, like, a cheesecake, but if you had it, put, like, a, a glossy red glaze over the cheesecake to make it look like an Edam. He loves it because you're making a giant baby bear. <laughs> <laughs> We need to do something elevated with the biscuit. Grapes is where there's something we need to consider. You have a whipped goat's cheese or whipped blue cheese or something like that. Whipped feta. Yeah, that's whipped feta, that was amazing. Oh, that's the plan. Yeah. Cool. Now we've right. just got to make it. Easy. Where are you starting? We're going to start with the crackers. Making them ourselves. Gourmet. <laughs> much like when I made noodles from no. scratch. No. no, no. Much like when I made a bean and sausage cassoulet from scratch. So. Just to clarify, you've come up with an idea in your normal brains, you've run it past the food team just to make sure it's not insane, but essentially you're running this blind. It's your first time. Yeah, the food team did say it was slightly insane, but we're doing things that we've done before on the show. Um, so we're not completely stepping out of comfort zone, apart from one element, which is a complete test. So for our spelt crackers, I'm combining spelt flour, salt and baking powder into a bowl. I'm going to add in some seeds, some honey, a little bit of water, mix it all together, onto a baking tray, into an oven. Gourmet. Why spelt flour? Well, it's impossible to make spelt crackers if you're not going to use spelt flour, isn't it? Otherwise, they're just crackers. Yeah, that's a very <laughs> valid answer. I'll ask a better question. Why have you chosen to make spelt crackers? Because we've got spelt flour. <laughs> <laughs> so where do you think Ben went wrong in making things gourmet? Because there's been a lot of abuse in the comments. And when I say abuse, I mean constructive criticism, of course. I think in each video that we've done previously, you've gone wrong in different ways. You've changed the brief and never actually got anywhere near the original brief. Your version of Make It Gourmet, actually across all three of those episodes, was to make a different dish that already existed. Why not make something completely new? <laughs> That's a lot of butter. <laughs> She's going to pick some of this butter out, but some of it's already attached itself <laughs> to the spelt flour. <laughs> You don't see this in Michelin star restaurants, do you? That's because you don't look in the kitchens. True. They're all fingering floury butter. <laughs> the thing for me that makes cheese and crackers so perfect is you have the texture of the crunch, you have the dairy fat of the cheese, which is either a chew or it's creamy. You also have some sort of acidity, or some chutney or some pickle lily, some fruitiness from some grapes on the side, maybe a stick of celery, a refreshing crunch, that kind of bitterness, and it just works and gives you the excuse to open, you know, a glass of mead or beer or wine to go with it. So, baby bells, somewhat flavourless. <laughs> oh, it's a um, subtle flavour cheese. It's got a slight tang. Uh, we're mixing that with the cheddar from your board and then a bunch of spice to do a compound cheese. We're taking basic cheeses and making them gourmet in flavour. Do you want to spice this or not? Yeah, yeah, I just also need some room to make a floured surface so I can roll out my dough to about two millimetres and in rectangle shape and then cut it into eight separate rectangles, move them onto a baking tray and pop them into an oven. All going into a blender <clears throat> and then to compound. It looks like a lovely dough. That is beautiful. Yeah, I'm quite surprised. Nine times out of ten when I make crackers, I actually like to do it between sheets of grease proof because you can get it really thin without it sticking, but I think you're doing it anyway. Cheese has been blitzed up. Goes very creamy. Um, and then, into some parchment paper, wrap it up into a sausage, and then 
into a fridge to cool, to, to, to solidify. So far, you're making, you know, a flavoured compound cheese and you're making your own crackers. This seems like cheese and crackers. Gourmet cheese. And crackers. Well, homemade for sure. The original plan was to solidify that into little cubes. Yeah. I quite like the creamy texture of it. Should I hold some back and then mix and match on the top of the plate? Yeah. Half and half it. I like it. Gourmet is a noun. It's a person, it's someone who takes pleasure in eating and drinking, and therefore to make something gourmet as an adjective, you have to make it suitable for said gourmand. Do you think that's what you're doing? In that case, I think this dish works perfectly for you because not only is this a sophisticated, um, well put together dish, but also we know you love your theatre, and this is gonna be a show and a half. Originally from the French, meaning wine taster. Why the egg white? It's going to help create a lovely golden crust. A nice shine and crisp crust. Mm. And something that the seeds will stick to. Woo. Gourmet. Into an oven for 12 minutes. Then, for another five minutes at 160, see how they get on. So, what would you rather? <laughs> I'd rather set a timer so I know what's going on. Goodness sake. Do you know about that, that whole thing about finishing a job? Yep. Yeah, that's the job. So Jay, you're doing Parmesan crisps or Parmesan twill. Twill! Parmesan, one of those ingredients I love to have in the fridge because it's got a relatively long shelf life. Wonderful flavour to add to so many things. While Jamie does that, onto the caper jus or sauce. Um, we've got some sultanas that have been soaking in water overnight. I'm gonna drain those off and add that to a bunch of capers and blitz it up. Mike had it in a store cupboard in green episode and he had it with pigeon, which was a game changer. Um, so we had to steal that and use it in this. Interesting that to make it gourmet, you've just added French words. Isn't that what all chefs do? That's what I did with the cassoulet, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is... So for clarity, equal quantity of dried fruit and capers, but the weight of the dried fruit is when it's dried, not once it's absorbed all the water and rehydrated overnight. It's going so long, there's some steam coming off of it. And there's no other way of doing that. I, I, I know, I, I, I wondered that. Have you got a little skewer there, Jay? I mean, if only that jug had a spout on it. I imagine it tastes a lot better than it looks. It's like a horrific Mr. Whippy. Shake it off. Let's stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fridge. So Parmesan crisps done, compound cheese done, crackers done, caper and sultana puree done. Now, whipped ghost cheese and ricotta. Jamie, you do that, I'll bang a pomegranate. When deseeding a pomegranate, do it in water and then all the pith floats to the top and all the pomegranate stays at the bottom. Also, it reduced the chance of getting a pomegranate over your lovely white shirt. So there's some lovely ways of cutting a pomegranate that mean it's much easier in life. You can actually segment it down by its natural sections or, as we've done a number of times, through the middle. And then I always like to hold it over my open hand, with fingers open, and just hit it on the back with a back of a wooden spoon or a rolling pin and it pushes out all the seeds. Whip together goat's cheese and ricotta and that will help you make whipped goat's cheese and ricotta. Lots of elements to this cheese and cracker plate but each of them quite simple. Evers, what kind of cheeses would you usually expect on your cheese board? I think you need a selection. It's good to have some blue for those who like it. I do. A blue vein. It doesn't always have to be super blue. A little subtle blue, perhaps. Like a light blue. Something hard and matured. Cheddar is classic. <coughs> Something goaty or maybe sheepy. Right. I, sorry, we're still talking about cheese boards. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a lump here now. What's the goat's cheese skin? Yeah, skin. I told you you should have peeled it. One thing with gourmet is you can't have lumps, can you? No. Unless you specifically say that it's lumpy. lumpy. For me, yeah, celery does belong on a cheese board, but I'm not a massive fan of a big stick of it. We go for ribbons and then straight into ice cold water, they 
curl up, so it should look really pretty and gourmet on the plate. Use celery, but make it gourmet. I agree with peeling celery. There's nothing worse than getting those stringy bits in your teeth. Ribbons is a nice touch. You've mentioned the word theatre. What on earth does that mean? Well, to us, Evers, we don't want to give the surprise away to you. But here is an illustration of what it should look like. Oh, I is, like it, and that's why I've forced I've, you to come I have it. to draw this, <laughs> which will be interesting. OK, still lots going on. What else you got left to do? Got the cheesy base, the cheesy shards. We've got our crackers. We've got compound cheese, celery now, a few grapes. Make it the vinaigrette and some oozy warm cheese. What's going in your dressing? We're doing a honey and red wine vinegar dressing. And probably a splash of oil, but I might go that first. I like the little nod of red wine vinegar with the cheese board. Often a choice that I go for, although actually a nice glass of crisp white, high acid can also work, or a port. I mean, if you need to emulsify it, you can also add in a tiny little bit of your egg yolk. I mean, that's a, that sounds like a really chefy thing to do. A little bit of mustard, for example, in a French dressing will give you that same kind of emulsification. Just a little bit of egg yolk. A little bit of egg yolk. Just like literally a, uh, like a drop, Oops. pinpricks worth. Wow, well, he's done that, he's got half an egg yolk in, so. Now it's time for the start of the show. We got, we had this in a pretentious episode. Scarmosa cheese, beautiful smoky cheese that when heated up, it becomes something that I'd never experienced before in cheese. It was chewy and stringy. It was everything you could ever wish for in a cheese. Okay, let's get this thing plated up. You've got all your elements. How does it come together? Evans, is there a countdown? Well, I'm just waiting for cheese and crackers. Okay, give us a countdown then. Three, two, one. Evers, would you mind uh, just uh, popping out for a little bit? We've got to do a, do a few little finishing touches. Right, and... Um, okay, so Boop! We've got you there, sir. Okay, Ben. Try to remove the blindfold. And lift the cloche. I was under a cloche anyway. The blindfold yes. was irrelevant. Wow. Reveal your gourmet cheese and crackers in three, two, one. A little guilty pleasure. Start the music. What a feast. What do you think? Well, he's taken the simple, humble plate of cheese and crackers and made it celebratory and something to share. I kind of like it. I feel like we Rowan atkinson it. A little bit. It's a bit, <laughs> little bit love, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to trying each individual bit. I'm confused by what it all tastes like together. May I? Yeah, dig in. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Your crackers aren't as on the mat mm. as I'd hoped. Mm. <laughs> More bready than cracker. Mm. The whipped goat's cheese, mm. lovely. With the sharpness of that mm. sweet caper sultana tang. The funky cheese of the parmesan, which we know of a parmesan crisp. That chilli cheese packs a punch. And some fire cheese. It's all delicious. I like the little bit of honey that comes through in the crackers. The thing is, the guilty pleasure of a throw together plate of cheese and crackers is simple, but when you turn it into a cheese course rather than a cheese board, especially in France, it's the course that comes before dessert. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that is something you could put down on the table for a whole group of people to dig into, and they would be more than happy. It's all delicious. And they got the experience of seeing it. Mm. Yeah, that nobody needs to see that mm. bit. Everyone the unedited version of that wasn't <laughs> great, Jamie. Well, there's no denying it's yummy, and it's kind of impressive, and it looks very inviting. Is it gourmet? I don't know, because we've changed that definition so many times, which means it's over to you guys. Comment down below. Did our two normal home cooks make cheese and crackers gourmet? Comment yes or no, and more importantly, why? What's the definition of gourmet? They do cat food that's gourmet, don't they? Do they? Yeah. Oh. 
Yeah, you can wow. buy like gourmet cat and dog food. <laughs> Is that your drag name? Snack-sized waxed cheese? <laughs> Nothing snack sized about it. Right. Oh dear. Oh dear. Excellent. Oh dear. Lovely. Ruined that. <laughs> cool. Right. <laughs>